I'm here at Taipei Veterans General Hospital, where they're already experiencing the benefits of AI. Whilst many AI systems are hidden behind closed doors, in this hospital we were given behind the scenes access. We have a, a patient actually inside the tunnel and uh, he is uh, scanned uh, for his uh, brain uh, to uh, see if there are any brain metastasis uh, coming from the lung cancer. Many of the patients come here already have a uh, preliminary diagnosis as a cancer from outside hospital. So every patient come here with anxiety. So our purpose is to diminish the anxiety, the degree of anxiety, and to shorten the process. In the real world, I have to read the images one by one. It's pretty uh, heavy physical loading work. But with the uh, AI assistance, I can ask AI to help me to read the images. But what could take a doctor a couple of weeks can be done by the AI in seconds. And you can see that how quick the image has been uploaded to the system. And from the AI, you can see the lesion already there. And another one here. That time can make all the difference. Beyond the diagnosis, the AI is also assisting the surgeons with surgery decisions. Already patient has been uh, stage four lung cancer, so uh, he shouldn't be uh, re-operated. Why though has Taiwan and this hospital managed to lead the world in AI? People in Taiwan were proud of two things. One is computer science. The other one is medicine. All of our uh, medical affairs was uh, computerized for more than 20 years. Is the fact that you've been collecting data uh -huh. over a number of years what puts you in a really good position to be able to put into practice a lot of this AI? Oh yeah, uh, because we can train the machine. They can learn to uh, write, uh, make the diagnosis of physicians. Okay, so the imaging is the same as imaging you would have used before, uh -huh. but it's at the point oh, yes. of diagnosis oh, yes. that a computer oh, can now yes. diagnose oh, yes. that, yes. Yes. instead of a doctor. Yeah, it's a kind of a deep learning. <laughs> Everyone in Taiwan has a healthcare card which is used to access medical records. So basically once you have a card, you can go to see doctor everywhere. Because I think 95% of people actually use our healthcare insurance system to, to, as, a, as a mean to see doctors. So that makes all the data centralized in one place. And uh, you can imagine that if some, a database that has all the medical record, no fragmentation, that is actually the first step of uh, AI. But the data can only be read if a doctor also inserts their card into this device. But it's also like a key or authorization by patient. Otherwise, I cannot access her information and without her approval. So I need to put my card here. So you can see a CT, see the information. We also upload the image within 24 hours after the study. That's very convenient. So if she visit the other hospitals or the primary care physician office, the doctors there also can access the same information like me. But it's not just big hospitals using AI in healthcare. I traveled across town to a small startup at the cutting edge of medical science. This brain tracking system is used to assess stress in the brain and in turn the likelihood of someone being susceptible to depression. Over the last decade, many, many neural imaging studies have proved that uh, the brain activity of a uh, patient with depression has some uh, abnormal uh, condition. But these evidence are found by MRI, not EEG. For mild depression, MRI cannot find anything. But we can find the mild depression from EEG signal, that is, the brainwave signal. The cap is cheaper and, unlike an MRI, is portable. It aims to allow doctors to diagnose depression in a more scientific way. And we use the AI analysis method to analyze the patterns of the data from the patients with depression. And finally, we, some, we found some biomarkers 
and we can detect whether the person has depression or not above 80% uh, accuracy. The company hopes to launch the product next year and is also looking at how it might be used to identify Alzheimer's, attention deficit disorder and susceptibility to insomnia.